This evening, International Women's Day 2023, celebrating digital for gender equality. Nightclub owner was remanded to jail for trafficking cocaine. Armed bandits robbed Masjid in Enmor during morning prayers. In the region, four U.S. citizens shot at, kidnapped in northern Mexico, FBI. And internationally, thousands in Georgia rally against foreign agents' bill. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. Today marks International Women's Day, an annual global celebration of women's social, economic, cultural, and political achievements. This year's team, Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality, highlights the critical role that digital innovation and technology plays in advancing gender equality and empowering women and girls worldwide. The COVID-19 pandemic has further amplified the importance of leveraging technology to create a more equitable world. The pandemic exposed the disproportionate impact of the digital divide and gender inequality, with women and girls facing significant barriers in accessing and using digital technologies, with remote work, online education, and e-commerce becoming the new normal, it is more critical than ever to address the digital divide and ensure that women and girls have equal access to digital technologies and opportunities. International Women's Day events and activities are bringing together governments, civil society organizations, and the private sector to advance the digital agenda. These activities range from virtual conferences and webinars to digital campaigns and advocacy efforts, all aimed at highlighting the importance of technology in advancing gender equality. One such event is the Women's in Business Pop-Up Shop 2023. The event begins tomorrow, March 9th to March 18th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily at the Tower Suites on Main Street. This pop-up shop will feature over 20 businesses showcasing various products and services from body shapers to arts and jewelry. There will also be an empowering zone with talks on women's empowerment and overcoming challenges. Admission is free. In an update on a gruesome accident we reported on Monday, at Greenwich Park Public Road East Bank Esquibo, four persons have lost their lives. The incident, which involved a minibus and a motor lorry, is currently under investigations by the police. The minibus driver, 50-year-old Vernon Prowell of Brent Street, work in Ville, Georgetown, and three passengers, 72-year-old Margaret Kennedy, 57-year-old Olga Reedy, and 40-year-old Elvis Charles, all succumbed to their injuries at the Lenora Cottage Hospital while receiving medical treatment. The accident occurred while motor lorry, driven by 38-year-old Ewart Stewart of Stewartville, West Coast Demerara, was traveling east along the northern side of the Greenwich Park Public Road at an estimated high speed towards a pedestrian crossing. At the same time, the minibus was proceeding in the opposite direction. According to reports, the lorry driver claimed that a car was traveling in front of him in the same direction and suddenly stopped at the pedestrian crossing. The lorry driver stated that he he applied the brakes and swerved to the right to avoid colliding with the motor car. In the process, the motor lorry collided with the right side front portion of the minibus, causing severe injuries to the passengers. Five other occupants of the minibus were also injured in the collision. The bodies of the four deceased persons are currently at the Ezekiel Funeral Parlor awaiting post-mortem examination. In other news, a well-known businessman and owner of the Iguana Nightclub, 44-year-old Royston Penniston has been remanded to jail after being charged with trafficking over 2 kilograms of cocaine. Penniston appeared before Principal Magistrate Sheridan Isaacs Marcus at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Monday, March 6, and was refused bail. Officers of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit conducted an operation at a property located at Festival City, North Rhineville, Georgia, where they intercepted Penniston with two hardcover suitcases in his possession on March March 3rd. A subsequent search of the suitcases in the presence of Penniston revealed a quantity of a whitish powdery substance suspected to be cocaine. He was escorted to the Kanu headquarters along with the suspected narcotics. The total weight of the narcotic substance found was approximately 5 pounds with a street value of over 2 million Ghana dollars. Penniston has been remanded to jail until his next court appearance which is scheduled for April 3rd, 2023. Stick around, we'll return 
Armed Bandits Rob Street in Enmore during morning prayers and Ghana signs $170 million loan agreement with the IDB. Give your home or office some shine. Fortune Investment Company. We provide reliable, commercial and residential, professional cleaning services in Guyana. We clean homes and commercial offices. Other services offered are floor care and tile polishing, interior auto detailing services, power washing, weeding and cleaning, and carpet, couch, and mattress cleaning. We are committed to keeping your homes and offices squeaky clean. Call us now at 592-689-7558 or 592 Two six three nine six three six five, or visit us at three four three zero Jackson North Rumville, Georgetown, Guyana. Fortune Investment Company. When we say clean, we mean spotless. Good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money. You should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. When you need money and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 46 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Hey! Hey! This is your fancy vehicle and car is your house? Yes, this is my vehicle and actually yeah. I'm waiting on my land. I'm actually renting this house for $50,000. $50,000? You had more? You crazy? You mad? You had no good? Why get the pile? Look, let me show you the light. Come with me. Come on down to Fabulous Homes today. Pay $50,000 every month for 36 months or until you reach 50% of your house costs. Move in after 75% of the cost has been paid. This is wonderful. Let's go. Sign me up. All right, let me go and dash where you land, lad. Ah. To explore our home ownership program, check our Facebook page for more information or come down to our office at Avalon Friendship. Hey, Chinese, thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Ben. You got to look. Yes. yes man. Call us at 227-1380 or 615-8740. Fabulous Homes International Realty, changing tenants into homeowners. At Fabulous Homes, we bring your dreams to life. Welcome back. Ghana has signed three loans agreements with the Inter-American Development Bank to invest in the country's transport, health and economic competitiveness sectors. The loans amount to U.S. $117 million and will support the climate-resilient road infrastructure development, expand capacity at seven hospitals, increase access to a more efficient public health system, and improve the national quality infrastructure capacity. The agreement was signed by Finance Minister Dr. Ashley Singh and the IDB's President Iran Golfan. 
The IDB's president expressed satisfaction in supporting Ghana's development, while the country's finance minister thanked the bank for its reliable and dependable partnership. In other news, in a brazen morning attack, two armed bandits stormed the Anjuman Anwarul Islam Masjid at Enmur, robbing four men, including Imam Jai Hatim, who was present during morning prayers on Tuesday, March 7th. Reported at around 5.15 a.m., the bandits arrived on a motorcycle armed with cutlasses. They walked into the masjid demanding the keys to a motorcycle parked outside and belonging to Faizul Ahmad. The men handed over the keys and the bandits proceeded to search everyone's pockets and took the cash they had on them. After robbing the men, the bandits fled the scene with the stolen motorcycle. The incident was reported to the police and an investigation has been launched. However, the amount of cash stolen has not been disclosed. Don't go away after the break. Cuba energy crisis, government seeks a solution as blackouts continue, and four U.S. citizens shot at kidnapped in northern Mexico, FBI. Celebrity Pure Vegan Cuisine and Bar. We say vegan, we speak about 100% vegan. No dairy products, no MSG. From the cheese, the butter, the milk, everything we use here, it's vegan. Our breakfast, some of the special we have for breakfast, porridge, fried plantain. We have boil and fried katahar, boil and fried cassavas. We have soup of the day, which you all know. The main thing in that soup is the dry mushrooms, as well as the bean curd. Young okra is a must with full ground food, split peas and everything up in that. Coconut milk is the main thing. Then we have the lunch time. Some of the main dishes the people already is hitting on, the split piece coca price, basmati and quinoa mix. A lot of people don't know what that, but you come down here, you get it. It's a replacement of rice and the great substitute in the vegan business. Then we have dal, corn, okra and carrots, edo leaves, chanchi down in coconut milk. There's so many side dishes, but one of the special things is the chicken that we make right here. We make sweet and sour chicken, strip chicken, jerk chicken. All of that is in-house, made right in here from scratch. In the evening, you know everything is up. We also carry a large variety of organic and natural products. Some of the products that we have here is the M. Yeah. The M, that one is a very important product for the body. Proteins and everything to the max. We have the Corellia. This also is very good for the body. We have the Sporlina. Sporlina is very good for everyone, but men benefit a lot from that. After the Sporlina, we have the Maca powder. These are all organic and natural powders for the body, especially when you're getting up there in age, you use these things as supplements. Black seed oil. On the internet, it said the only thing the black seed oil don't cure is death. And there are many more products that we have there, full variety. We have the natural juices we also make. We have from like the sorrel juice, the pineapple juice, mobby, ginger beer. All these things make from the bark or the natural powder. We do not use concentrate in this cuisine at all. Everything we do it natural. Also at the Celebrity Pure Vegan Cuisine, we have a well-stocked bar. Some people choose to have a, a drink when they finish eating. We need to make sure that they're comfortable and happy when they're leaving this place. So we do our best to provide the services that we think is required. Remember this place are fully AC and we cater for weddings, all occasions, birthday parties, anniversaries. So we set the place so that Everyone can come feel right and understand what's happening. Come right down to the Pure Vegan Cuisine and Bar, 198 Camp Street again, and you will find everything you need to live to be healthy. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Cubans are struggling with an ongoing energy crisis. Most of the island nation's power plants were built in Soviet times and break down frequently, but the government doesn't have enough money to build new ones. Al Jazeera's Ed Agustin reports. While Havana, the capital, is mainly spared, Cubans throughout the country's provinces are facing power cuts. Michel Vega says he often has to put up with six-hour blackouts. Bueno, cuando se va la luz, sencillamente... When the lights go out, you can't sleep until it comes back. I have an eight-year-old child who has to go to school the next day, so I have to be by his side, keeping the mosquitoes at bay so he can sleep. It's an issue for the workforce too. In the all-important agriculture sector, production relies on power. We can't crush sugar cane because we need electricity. And so if there's no electricity, we can't mill. The cane rots, you can't work, you can't earn money. 
Experts say it's a problem that's been brewing for years. Cuba's electric grid is, is old. Uh, it's more than uh, 35 to 40 years uh, that's been operating. Uh, so it's all, it's tired, it's inefficient, uh, it's obsolete. Uh, the system of the eight thermoelectric power plants and 20 units, uh, right now, for example, only about 40% are, are working and operating. The island needs to update its rickety infrastructure, but it doesn't have the money. Cuba's energy crisis stems from its deep economic crisis. An inefficient planned economy and fallout from the pandemic are key factors. But economists say US sanctions make a bad situation worse, starving the country of billions of dollars in revenue. Now that's less money to import fuel, to build new power plants, and to invest in renewables. The Communist Party wants to avoid a repeat of the summer 2021 protests when tens of thousands hit the streets across the island. Those protests started after a 12-hour power cut in a small westerly town. And then last August, lightning struck the country's main fuel depot, causing an inferno and widespread blackouts. By last October, the average Cuban household was going 10 hours a day without electricity. Since then, Cuba has leased more floating power stations from Turkey. An expensive band-aid solution, analysts say, but one that pumps more megawatts into the system in the short term. And Russia is sending more petroleum to Cuba to make up for Ukraine-related sanctions imposed by the US and Europe. It's helping, but summer, where energy demand goes up, is on the way. And with blackouts still a common occurrence, and with more shortages of both electricity and liquefied gas expected, some people here are reverting to charcoal. Their patience hey. is being tested. Ed Augustin, Al Jazeera, Camaway, Cuba. Two or four Americans who were kidnapped in Mexico on Friday have been found dead. Two others have been released and are being treated at a U.S. hospital. The group was abducted by armed men while driving into the city of Matamoros, Al Jazeera's Manuel Ropalo reports. Two of the four Americans who were kidnapped last Friday in the Mexican state of Tamaulipas are dead. The news was confirmed early on Tuesday by the governor of Tamaulipas during a phone call with Mexico's president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador. It was fully confirmed by the prosecutor's office. Two of the four are dead. One is injured and the other is alive. The two survivors of the attack have since been transferred back across the border into Texas. State officials in Mexico say Mexican security forces had been working in close collaboration with U.S. FBI and DEA agents, and that at least one of the alleged kidnappers has been detained. There will be binational cooperation to continue in this investigation. The four Americans crossed into Mexico last Friday, reportedly on a medical tourism trip, as costs for medical procedures in Mexico are much lower than in the U.S. According to local reports, shortly after entering Mexico, their vehicle, a white minivan, was shot at by gunmen. This footage appears to show the moment the four passengers on board were taken away, setting off an international incident. Today we learn the very sad news that Mexican state and federal authorities recovered four U.S. citizens kidnapped on March 3rd in Matamoros, Mexico. Two U.S. citizens were returned to the United States. The bodies of two other U.S. citizens killed in the same incident were also recovered. We're providing all appropriate assistance to them and their families. And we extend our deepest condolences. All four Americans were found in the village of Tecolte, about 24 kilometers from the border city of Matamoros, where the kidnapping took place. This area is known for being home to warring factions of the Gulf Cartel. Mexico's Tamaulipas state is also among half a dozen Mexican states that were recently named on a do-not-travel list by the U.S. State Department. Manuel Rapalo, Al Jazeera. And internationally, thousands of protesters have rallied in Georgia's capital, Tbilisi, against a bill that would force non-government and media organizations to register as foreign agents if more than 20% of their funding comes from overseas. Opponent says it is undemocratic and could hurt the country's chances of joining the European Union. Al Jazeera's Farid Kar reports. Outside of Georgia's parliament, demonstrators stood their ground against riot police firing tear gas and water cannon. 
The unrest came soon after politicians gave their initial backing to a controversial new law. It would force non-governmental and media organisations to register as foreign agents if more than 20% of their funding comes from overseas. Its critics say the law will suppress press freedom and civil society. And it's highlighted broader discontent of what is seen as deepening alignment with Russia by the country's governing dream party led by Prime Minister Irakli Garavishvili. Steadily, uh, the current uh, government, the Georgian Dream political party, uh, has uh, moved the country uh, backward in recent years toward a more uh, pro-Russian direction. And this law that is being proposed is almost a copy of one that uh, Russia has. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, has called the law a very bad development. Protesters say the bill is undemocratic and harms Georgia's chances of joining the bloc. I came here because I, I know that my country belongs to Europe, but my government doesn't understand it. And we believe that this is a part of the big play. This is uh, Russia's play. And Putin is um, facing uh, damage in Ukraine and they want to gain something here. So we are here to protect our country because we don't want to be part of Russia again. Dozens of media and civil society organizations affected by the legislation have said they will not comply. On an official visit to the United States, the Georgian president expressed her support for the protesters. No one needed this law. It came from nowhere. But maybe it was dictated from Moscow. It needs to go. It needs to be repealed any way you want. I said from the first day that I would veto this law, and I will veto it. The law highlights deep divisions in the former Soviet state. On Monday, a mass brawl broke out between MPs debating the bill. With Parliament able to overturn a presidential veto and the law passing its first reading comfortably, protesters see no choice but to keep pressuring politicians from the streets. Ferdi Akar, Al Jazeera. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the Spring event forecast. This concludes today's headline news update. Tune in tomorrow, Thursday at 7 p.m. with our next broadcast. For more news and updates, you can visit our Facebook and YouTube pages. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.